In the realm of clandestine networks, various darknets exist, such as Freenet and I2P, yet the most renowned is Tor, short for the Onion Router. Employing specialized software links your computer to the Tor network, rendering you incognito. Typically, when accessing a website, your IP address is disclosed, providing information about your geographical location. However, Tor confounds this by assigning the IP address of the connected computer, potentially miles away. This cloaks your true whereabouts. For added security, it's prudent to utilize a VPN before connecting to Tor. This way, even if either Tor or the VPN servers were compromised, they would remain oblivious to your origin and destination, only revealing one or the other. Tor serves various commendable purposes. Once connected, you can peruse any website, both on the darknet and the conventional internet, all while preserving your anonymity. Tor also unveils the deep web, exclusive to Tor users and denoted by addresses ending in .onion, distinct from the familiar .com or .net. Given its purported anonymity, Tor often becomes a haven for illicit activities. A foray into Tor's offerings reveals platforms advertising illegal services, contraband software or music, and blogs elucidating counterfeit money production or criminal hacking. Now segueing into the resonant tones of the undercover melody, Tor harbors drug marketplaces, akin to an eBay for controlled substances. Users rely on seller ratings via a peer review system, ensuring judicious choices. Setting up this clandestine rendezvous is ostensibly straightforward, yet fortifying your security entails a protracted process. Procuring Bitcoin, engaging a VPN service, connecting to Tor, configuring PGP, and crafting distinct personas with separate email addresses. It's imperative not to employ work-related email addresses, a practice that, incredulously, some individuals still adhere to, much to the chagrin of prudence. Noteworthy in this clandestine tapestry is Silk Road, a notable dark market where the orchestrator, Ross Ulbricht, incurred life imprisonment for facilitating the largest illegal marketplace globally. Enter the federal arena, where authorities wage a war on drugs, with dark markets attracting their relentless scrutiny. Despite zealous pursuits, new markets burgeon. Alpha Bay emerged on tour shortly after Silk Road's demise, swiftly becoming a hub for drug trade. Evolution, the then prominent market, succumbed to a shutdown, not at the hands of the feds, but due to a deceitful shutdown by its operator, absconding with a staggering $12 million in Bitcoin. The fallout catapulted Alphabay into prominence, witnessing a surge of 18,000 new users in three days. Alphabay's ascendancy continued, boasting 400,000 users within two years, making it the preeminent dark market globally. Amidst this nefarious commerce, the site exuded user-friendly appeal, providing a sanctuary for buyers and sellers of a myriad of illegal items. While diverse transactions ensued, the predominant currency remained Bitcoin, Monero and Ethereum, ensuring an aura of anonymity. However, the site's prosperity attracted unwanted attention. Global law enforcement agencies initiated investigations, their efforts thwarted by Alphabay's meticulous encryption, pseudonymous administrators and obscured server locations. The Darknet's volatile landscape, rife with competing drug marketplaces, street gangs and black hat hackers, demanded Alphabay's vigilant safeguarding of its identity, location, and server details. In the intricate dance of the dark net, where shadows intertwine with secrecy, Alphabay stood as both a testament to the allure of clandestine commerce and a target for those seeking to unveil its mysteries. In their pursuit, the FBI encountered a vexing challenge, a scarcity of leads. Resorting to a unique tactic, they delved into Alphabay's marketplace, engaging in covert transactions. An undercover FBI agent seamlessly integrated into the clandestine network, employing bitcoins to procure marijuana. Subsequent deliveries yielded no clues, concealing the seller's identity, save for a trace to California. Undeterred, the FBI extended their purchases, acquiring heroin, fentanyl, marijuana, and even a substantial quantity of methamphetamine. Beyond narcotics, the FBI expanded its investigative reach, procuring fake driver's licenses and a credit card skimmer designed for ATMs. The trail remained elusive until a pivotal discovery altered the course of the investigation. A close examination of a welcome email received by an undercover agent revealed an unconventional reply to email address, pimpalex91 at hotmail.com. Unraveling this digital thread, the FBI traced it to Microsoft, unmasking Alexandra Cases, 
born in 1991. Cases, hailing from Montreal, Canada, purportedly operated a tech support company named EBX Technologies. Armed with a name, the FBI meticulously probed deeper into Kazi's, uncovering a labyrinth of connections. Alpha Bay was not the sole contender in the clandestine marketplace. Another player gaining prominence, Hansa, distinguished itself with an impeccable user interface, adept admins, and robust customer support, particularly in Europe. In tandem with Alpha Bay's investigation, Hansa drew the scrutiny of global law enforcement. While Hansa's servers veiled themselves within the anonymized Tor network, a vulnerability emerged, a development server lurking on the regular internet. A vigilant security researcher stumbled upon this exposed Hansa server situated in a Dutch data center. Collaborating with the Netherlands National High Tech Crime Unit, the researcher initiated a virtual wiretap monitoring the server's incoming and outgoing packets. This covert operation yielded copies of both the development and production servers, facilitating further scrutiny. Amidst the trove of data, the challenge arose in deciphering German language chat logs documenting years of conversations between anonymous admins. Navigating linguistic barriers, the Dutch authorities enlisted a German translator to decrypt the logs. Amid discussions about site management, dispute resolution and feature additions, the true identities of the Hansa admins surfaced. Further revelations included an admin's home address, introducing a jurisdictional hurdle when the Dutch sought cooperation from Germany. Remarkably, the two Hansa admins were concurrently under German investigation for a prior venture, an online platform for pirated e-books and audiobooks. A symbiotic collaboration unfolded between Dutch and German authorities to synchronize their efforts. While Germany pursued the suspects, the Netherlands aimed to commandeer Hansa. The strategy entailed orchestrating arrests coinciding with the admin's presence on the site. However, a twist of fate intervened. The Dutch server abruptly vanished, prompting a frantic search for its new location. Months passed in suspense as Hansa persisted as Europe's preferred hub for illicit transactions. Amidst the digital shadows, a breakthrough materialized. Bitcoin addresses embedded in ancient chat logs became the focal point for surveillance. While Bitcoin transactions maintain anonymity, the necessity to convert digital currency into tangible cash unveils a vulnerability. An auspicious break unfolded when one Bitcoin address funneled funds into a Netherlands-based exchange. Armed with this lead, the Dutch high-tech crime unit scrutinized the exchange's records, uncovering a trail that led to a server in Lithuania. Collaborating with Lithuanian authorities, a decisive revelation emerged, the exact location of the new Hansa server. The stage was set for the coordinated efforts of Dutch, German and Lithuanian agencies to apprehend the Hansa admins and seize control. Yet as the plan approached fruition, an unexpected development transpired. The FBI, having discerned Alpha Bay's mastermind and server location, notified the Dutch authorities. A strategic alliance materialized, synchronizing the takedowns of both Alpha Bay and Hansa. In this intricate web of cyber pursuits, the collaborative dance of global law enforcement unfolded, culminating in the dismantling of two significant dark markets. The digital underworld, momentarily disrupted, echoed with the harmonized efforts of authorities across borders. In the event that the Dutch government already held sway over Hansa, a trove of user information would be at their disposal, potentially facilitating the apprehension of numerous illicit dealers. This strategic plan, named Operation Bayonet by the FBI, drew its moniker from the amalgamation of words such as Bay from Alpha Bay. Net, representing the dark net or internet, encapsulating the essence of piercing the enigmatic realm of the dark marketplace. The authorities envisaged that the joint demise of Alpha Bay and the governmental control of Hansa would engender a prolonged erosion of trust in the shadowy marketplace, dealing a potentially crippling blow to the online trade of illicit commodities. Operation Bayonet garnered unanimous approval, setting the stage for the subsequent takeover of Hansa. The Dutch authorities collaborated with Lithuania and Germany to orchestrate a synchronized raid on the data center and the simultaneous arrest of the two Hansa administrators. On June 20, 2017, this meticulously planned operation swung into action. The Dutch law enforcement operating in Lithuania conducted a raid on the data center, while the German counterparts executed precise and cautious maneuvers 
to raid the homes of both Hansa administrators. The intricate methodology employed by the German police involved discreetly monitoring the administrators' activities, ensuring their presence at the computers during the raid. The success of this operation hinged on its careful execution, and indeed the German police triumphed in both raids. The administrators were apprehended with their laptops open and unlocked, affording the German police the opportunity to swiftly communicate the success to their Dutch counterparts. Subsequently, the entire Hansa server was expeditiously relocated to the Netherlands, now under Dutch jurisdiction. The German police, maintaining discretion, reported the arrests as related to piracy of e-books and audiobooks, leaving the unsuspecting Hansa users oblivious to the takeover and server migration. While incarcerated, the detained administrators divulged all passwords and credentials essential for accessing every facet of the site. Even the four moderators on Hansa remained oblivious to the takeover. This covert triumph marked a significant accomplishment for both Dutch and German authorities. With Europe's premier dark market under Dutch control, the authorities transformed the platform into a comprehensive surveillance apparatus. These shadowy markets teemed with dealers peddling substantial quantities of meth, cocaine, heroin, weapons and various other unlawful items. The authorities sought to amass substantial evidence against these dealers to potentially curb their illicit trade. The initial step involved rewriting the code to log user passwords in clear text, enabling subsequent attempts to reuse these logins on other dark markets and websites. A breakthrough was achieved by devising a method to intercept and log all communications between buyers and sellers, preserving encryption while revealing the home addresses of many buyers. Despite the site's previous removal of metadata from uploaded pictures, authorities adeptly stripped and saved this information before posting, unveiling crucial details like the date, time, camera used, and sometimes the geolocation of the photo. Seizing the moment, the Dutch police engineered a simulated server glitch that inadvertently wiped all photos from the site, compelling sellers to re-upload and inadvertently disclosing numerous seller locations. Hansa, with over 70,000 listings, inundated the authorities with a wealth of information, challenging them to process this voluminous data. In a remarkable ploy, law enforcement tricked users into downloading a homing beacon under the guise of a file essential for backing up Bitcoin encryption keys in case of a site shutdown. Users unwittingly exposed their real IP addresses, providing authorities with additional locations of dealers. Throughout this operation, the Dutch police adeptly impersonated the former Hansa admins, responding to moderators, addressing user complaints, and delivering commendable customer support, all while remaining incognito. Users, blissfully unaware of the shift in administration, expressed satisfaction with the level of customer support received. A strategic decision was made to allow the unimpeded buying and selling of items, except for one crucial prohibition, the sale of fentanyl. This potent substance, akin to heroin but more perilous, was implicated in numerous overdoses, prompting its exclusion. The trap was now set. The Dutch police, leveraging the popularity of Hansa, had fashioned a honeypot to lure criminals into perpetrating crimes under vigilant scrutiny. With a plethora of gathered information, they awaited the FBI's cue for the next phase of Operation Bayonet. The FBI, poised for action, traced the owner of Alpha Bay to Alexandra Kazis, residing in Thailand. Coordinating with Canadian and Thai authorities, the FBI orchestrated a simultaneous raid on the data center and Alexandra's residence, intending to apprehend him while logged into his computer for evidentiary purposes. On July 5, 2017, the joint forces of Canada, Thailand and the FBI executed their plan. Canadian police descended on the data center, initiating the shutdown of servers, while Thai police employing a meticulous and inconspicuous approach targeted Alexandra's opulent villa. A staged vehicular incident near the residence created a diversion, as plainclothes officers, posing as neighbors, induced a commotion. Alexandra, aware of the disturbance, emerged shirtless, inspecting the damaged gate, only to be swiftly apprehended by waiting officers. His open cell phone was promptly secured to prevent lockout, and Thai police, entering his residence, discovered his computer logged into the Alpha Bay server as the administrator. In the scrutiny that followed, a text file containing all passwords for the Alpha Bay site was unearthed, constituting substantial evidence for Alexander's ownership of the colossal dark market. The Montreal data center raid also proved successful, 
with the FBI seizing servers and promptly taking them offline. The capture of Alexandra cases transpired discreetly, with the FBI refraining from announcing the takedown of Alpha Bay. The ensuing days witnessed disgruntled Alpha Bay users speculating on a potential exit strategy akin to the closure orchestrated by the administrators of Evolution, who absconded with users' bitcoins. Alexandra Kazes found himself incarcerated in a Thai jail, awaiting extradition to the United States. Investigations revealed that Alexandra had been residing in Thailand for the past eight years, having married a Thai woman in her early twenties. Alpha Bay, a mere two years old, marked a divergence from his earlier profession as a software developer. Alexandra, visually resembling a quintessential computer technologist, bore a striking resemblance to a youthful Elon Musk, with slightly disheveled hair and a penchant for casual attire. His wife, a seemingly simple and nurturing individual, worked as a researcher at an academic institution. Pictures portrayed her as modest, eschewing flashy attire, suggesting an unassuming and down-to-earth nature. The police inquiry unearthed her closeness to her parents and an affable disposition. Neither Alexander nor his wife conformed to the stereotypical image of masterminds behind the world's largest drug marketplace. The US initiated a civil forfeiture complaint against Alexander and his wife, empowering the FBI to seize their entire estate. Alexander's meticulously maintained journal of assets facilitated the FBI's comprehensive seizure, encompassing 10 vehicles, including a $900,000 Lamborghini, a Mini Cooper, a BMW motorcycle, and a Porsche Panamera. Diverse real estate holdings, including luxurious villas in Thailand, a residence for his wife's parents, a forthcoming villa in Bangkok, and vacation homes in Phuket. In possession were substantial quantities of cryptocurrencies, comprising Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero, and Zcash. A sum of $8.8 .8 million from bank accounts and digital currencies was apprehended by the FBI. Additionally, all Bitcoin, Monero, and Ethereum from the seized Alpha Bay servers in Montreal fell into the hands of the authorities. At the time of its confiscation, Alpha Bay boasted a staggering 250,000 active listings, dwarfing Silk Road's 13,000 when it faced closure. Notably, Alexandra commanded a 2 to 4% transaction commission, overseeing approximately 840,000 bitcoins in transfers, totaling around $450 million in transactions. Federal estimates pegged his commissions at a substantial $9 to $18 million. Alexandra, as per his records, asserted a self-net worth of $23 million, a considerable fortune deemed commensurate with the perilous nature of his illicit enterprise. Contrary to the archetype of a millionaire drug lord, Alexandra appeared inconspicuous, especially in photographs with his wife portraying a semblance of normality. His father, interviewed by a Montreal Canadian news outlet, painted a picture of a compassionate individual, devoid of criminal history, substance use, or any violent inclinations. Impressively intelligent, Alexandra's academic achievements even led to skipping a school year. Amidst the turmoil, his wife, eight months pregnant, faced the distressing prospect of asset seizure, heightened by the ominous fate of Silk Road's Ross Ulbricht, sentenced to life without parole. Alexandra, cornered by mounting pressures, felt devoid of options, contemplating a bleak future. Tragically, on July 12th, after seven days in a Thai jail, Alexandre succumbed to despair, fashioning a makeshift noose from a towel, tightening it into a knot, a poignant act of self-inflicted demise. The discovery of his lifeless body in the jail cell, reported by Thai police, marked the moment the Wall Street Journal unveiled Alpha Bay's federal takeover and its owner's demise plunging the dark market community into chaos. Conspiracy theories flourished, speculating on the circumstances surrounding Alexandra's death, fueling a frenzied atmosphere within the Darknet forums. Following Alpha Bay's shutdown, a surge of new users, as planned, flooded the Dutch government-controlled Hansa dark market. With over 5,000 daily registrations, far surpassing the usual 600, the registration system buckled necessitating Dutch police intervention to restore functionality. Dutch law mandated meticulous tracking and reporting of every sale, an overwhelming task with approximately 1,000 daily transactions. After 27 days of Dutch government oversight, collecting data on 27,000 transactions, the plug was pulled, signalling the cessation of the operation. 
A banner proclaiming the Dutch National Police's seizure adorned the Hansa site, coinciding with Alf Bay's FBI seizure announcement. Today, the Department of Justice announces the takedown of the dark web market Alpha Bay. This is the largest dark market web place takedown in world history. An Alpha Bay staff member claimed that this group serviced more than 40,000 illegal vendors, people who sell illegal products, for more than 200,000 customers. By far, most of this activity was in The revelation shattered trust within the dark market community, causing chaos. For the FBI, the operation provided an opportunity to amass evidence, leading to the capture of Alpha Bay's moderators. Simultaneously, the Dutch police acquired data on 420,000 users and 10,000 home addresses, forwarded to Europol for further action. The closure resulted in the confiscation of approximately $12 million worth of Bitcoin from the Hansa server, leading to the arrest of over a dozen Netherlands-based dealers. The aftermath included over 50 knock-and-talks by the police, engaging known significant buyers or sellers. To this day, the FBI and Dutch police sift through the amassed data, pursuing individuals with required information. While dark markets experienced a temporary upheaval, scattering users without a collective migration to an alternative site, the long-term impact remains uncertain. Emerging dark markets like Dream Market and Wall Street are gaining momentum, but users are cautioned about the inherent risks. The Sting operation's success demonstrated the importance of robust personal security measures. The exposures of Alexander and the Hansa administrators were attributed to lapses in personal security, emphasizing the critical role such measures play. Jeff Sessions' assertion that the dark net isn't a haven is questioned, as meticulous precautions can indeed foster anonymity. The massive worldwide demand for illicit items persists, tempting risk-takers to delve into the forbidden realm and capitalize on the opportunity.